Good afternoon everyone, especially to our teachers. By the way, I am Melody Arberona. And now, I'm going to discuss the Chapter 3, Lesson 2. The Code of Ethics for Professional Teachers, Relationship with the Secondary and Tertiary Stakeholders. So now, there is an African proverb that says it takes a whole village to raise a child. Well, it's true. That means that an entire community of people must provide for interact positively with children. For those children to experience and grow in a safe and healthy environment. For example, older siblings. Older siblings have the biggest impact to their younger siblings' personalities. Kay most likely, ang ilang ginatich is mga bad habits. Diba? Let's read the introduction. The teachers and the state. The education of a child is not the sole responsibility of school head and teachers. In fact, school heads and teachers cannot do it by themselves. As the African proverb says, it takes a whole village to raise a child. The Code of Ethics cites the different group of external stakeholders with whom school and teachers have to relate and work for education of the child. These are the State Article 2, the Community Article 3, and Parents Article 9. Secondary stakeholders indirectly receive the service, and these are the learner's parents. Tertiary stakeholders are indirectly but crucial participants in the process of children's education. These are the future employers, the governments, and the state, and society in general. So it's very clear in introduction that the education of child is not the sole responsibility of school head and teachers. So now, let's listen to this short video. Teachers have the greatest influential duty in this world because they can make either a monster or a hero for the future of the society. Teachers help students learn academic basics, but they also teach valuable life lessons by setting a positive example. As role models, educators must follow a professional code of ethics. This ensures that students receive fair, honest, and uncompromising education. A professional code of ethics outlines teachers' main responsibilities to their students and defines their role in students' lives. So, dako jud kaayo o impact ang teachers sa ato ang life. So, kita as a future educator, we must follow the professional code of ethics. So now, these are the do's and don'ts of the section under the second article of the code of ethics. These are the teacher and the states. Yes, Eman. Ah, so you're asking if it's fine to use the symbol of the Philippine flag as your costume for the upcoming gay pageant. Well, it's fine. It's very fine, actually. It is cute. Section 1. The school are the nurseries of the citizens of the state. Each teacher is trustee of the cultural and educational heritage of the nation, and it's under obligation to transmit to learn such as heritage, as well as to elevate national morality, promote national pride, cultivate love of country, and still allegiance to the constitution and respect for all duty, constituted authorities, and promote obedience to the laws of the state. Pardon? This is the memo? What? The city would be on lockdown next week? Wait, wait, wait. Why? Because of the virus? Well, we can stop our students from learning. Let's just advise them to be healthy and, you know, come to school. Um, the virus isn't dangerous actually. 
Section 2. Every teacher or school official shall actively help carry out the declared policies of the state and shall take an oath to this effect. Okay, class. I'm not feeling well today. Section 3. And the interest of the state of the Filipino people, as much as of his own, every teacher shall physically, mentally, and morally fit. Yes, teacher Mel. What? The form should be submitted tomorrow? No, it's actually late. Yeah, I know. The director told me earlier, but, you know, I have a family defense. And today I have a business schedule. So, can you do it for me? Section 4. Every teacher shall possess and actualize full commitment and devotion to duty. Yes, Mayor. Yes, Mayor. I will do my best to encourage my student to vote for you. Mm, how much is my commission for this? 20000 Section 5. A teacher shall not engage in the promotion of any political, religious, or other partisan interest, and shall not directly or indirectly solicit, require, collect, or receive any money, service, or other valuable material from any person or entity for such purposes. Class. Who among you here is not yet registered? Okay, that's good. Next week is the election day. So I think it's comfortable with you to stay at home because all the running candidate is not worthy. Section 6. Every teacher shall vote and shall exercise all other constitutional rights and responsibilities. Okay class, next week is the election day. If you vote the candidate that I told you, you will be perfect on your final exam. Section 7. A teacher shall not use his position or official authority of influence to acquire any other person to follow any political course of action. My research result today is actually grand, but... I don't like the person who is in charge as the mayor today. I have no plan to contribute to the city's better. You can do it. Section 8. Every teacher shall enjoy academic freedom and shall have the privilege of sharing the product of his researches and investigations, provided that if the results are Enemical to the declared policies of the state, they shall be drawn to the proper authorities for appropriate remedial action. Abs Let's read the abstraction. The coverage English dictionary defines a nursery as a place where babies and young children are cared for, while the parents are somewhere else. In Holti culture, a nursery is a place where young plants and trees are cultivated and grown. Both definitions may apply to the statement in the Code of Ethics. School are the nurseries of citizens of the state and that parents leave their children in school under the care of teachers while they work. Like nurseries where young planters cultivated and grown. A school true teachers are entrusted with the noble task of instilling pride in learners. One cultural and educational heritage, love of country, and in sowing the seeds of national morality. These are the many things in our Filipino culture that we can.